Okay, so the first type that we're going to look at is GCF, which, if you guys remember, means greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. Yep, you're going to keep this. You're not turning it in. Um, and I have learned something since I um, showed you how to do this. I learned a trick on the calculator. And so I'll show you the calculator trick because it actually makes things a little bit easier for you guys. I just got to know where a calculator is. Okay. So <clears throat> if we are looking at, let's do our first example. So our first example is going to be 6x to the 4th plus 18x. And this one might be okay for you guys. Anybody know what the GCF is? Three? Six? Okay, so if you're not sure, here's a cool calculator trick, and I think Desmos does it too, but I haven't practiced it on Desmos. But your calculator for sure does it. Your calculator does it to try to help you find um, common denominators, but we're not finding common denominators, we're gonna do it for GCFs. So if you click on the math button, and you go over to number, now, we're not going to scroll through every time, but I want to show you guys what it looks like. This means uh, greatest common, I think it's greatest common denominator, greatest, co ooh, greatest common divisor is actually probably what it means. Greatest common divisor. Um, but for us, it, it could mean greatest common factor. It's the greatest thing that's in common between both the numbers. So when we do this, we're going to hit math, we're going to go over, and we're going to press the number 9 because it was the ninth thing on the list. And when you do that, GCD is going to pop up on your screen. And what you can do is type 6, 18, and the comma is above your 7. It's above the 7 key. Right above that is a comma. So 6, 18. And what the calculator will do is it will find the greatest common factor for you between those numbers. So 6. So now at this point, if you are not great at multiplication, you can always find the greatest number that's in common between those. That is a trick that I learned like two weeks ago. So the biggest number in common between these is 6. And then if you guys remember, if we look at the variables, uh, the one that's the biggest in common is whichever one is smaller. So this is x to the fourth. Uh, anyone remember what the exponent is if it's not written? It's a one. It's technically a one if it's not written down. So x to the one is smallest, so that's what we're going to take out. And then we just have to write down our leftovers. So I took out the six, so that's gone. I had four x's, I took out one, so how many are left over? Three, so I've got x to the third, and then I've got a plus sign. Eighteen divided by six, three, and I had an x and I took it out, and so that's it, I'm done. Now, if the thing that's in the parentheses could be factored, you would. So this is x to the third plus 3. That kind of looks like sum of cubes. If you guys remember the SOAP acronym, and we did two different colored markers. But instead of being like x cubed plus 27, or x cubed plus 8, or x cubed plus 64, 3 is not a perfect cube. So that's why we're stopping here. We're not doing any further. Okay, let me come up with, let me see if I can find one that has, another type. Okay, here's a good one. All right, so we're gonna do 80 and to the third minus 24 n. 80 and to the third minus 24 n. 
So if we are using the calculator to help us find the GCF, what should we type? So we're going to do math, go over to number, and what do we type? Nine. It's option number nine on the list. And we're going to type 80, 24. And I'm guessing this would work for three numbers, maybe, if you put another comma, but I've never tried it with three. So we'll have to do that next. So the GCF is eight. So we're going to take out an eight. Let's go ahead and try it with three numbers real fast and see if it works. So if I did like 80, 24, and 16. Nope, it only likes you to do two. So this will only work with two numbers at a time, it looks like. Okay, so eight is the number that's in common between these two. And then if we look at the n values, what's in common with the n values? What can we take out for the n? We got n to the third, we've got a plain n, so what can we take out? One, we can take n to the first out. Okay, so 80 divided by eight is 10, okay. Uh, n to the third, you take out an n, and you get n to the second, okay. 24, you divide out 8, you get 3. Uh, we already took the n out, so we're done. Okay. All right, so those were problems that were just plain GCF, nothing more to it, that's all. Um, next, let's go ahead and look at um, difference of squares. And does anyone remember, let's write these off to the side, we've got 1 squared is 1, what's 2 squared? 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 5 squared is 6 squared is 7 squared is 49. Is Quanta the only one who knows these? Anybody else? Okay, somebody is, besides Quanta, what's 8 squared? 64. Okay. 9 squared. Okay. 10 squared. 11 squared. Okay, and then we're going to stop at 12 squared. Perfect. Okay. So there's our list of perfect squares. That's uh, what we're going to use to kind of recognize to see if we're dealing with a difference of squares problem. Okay. So for the first one, everyone got those written down? For the first one, we're going to do uh, a squared minus 25. And does anyone remember the trick about the perfect squares? What's the trick about the perfect squares? How many sets of parentheses do we have? Two. 
we always have two sets of parentheses with our answer. One has one has a plus, one has a minus. And then what do we do with the numbers that we've got? <coughs> Anyone remember? So with the a squared, we say, okay, that's a and a. And with the 25, we say the square root of 25 is 5. So that would be 5 and 5. And we're done. That's it. Okay. So two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. And then we basically just have to take the square root of the number. Okay, let's try this one. We're going to do 16n squared minus 9. So if we look at the numbers, so it's just like the previous set of problems that were only GCF, where only GCF problems typically just have two terms. So two terms, two terms. These typically only have two terms. They just have two. But the difference between these and the GCF problems is that the GCF problems sometimes have a plus between them. And then these problems, we're often going to be looking for those perfect square numbers. So before we had 25, this time we got a 16, we got a 9. So we're looking for those special numbers. So again, I'm going to do two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. And what's the square root of 16? 4. So in the first spot, I'm going to say 4n and 4n. And then what should I put in the second spot? 3. So the square root of 9 is 3, 3, and 3. 4n plus 3, 4n minus 3. Okay. Now for the next one, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to have 8a squared minus 98. And this one's going to be weird because this doesn't have those perfect square numbers in it. 8a squared minus 98. It does not have those perfect square numbers in it. So what do you guys think? Eight a squared minus ninety eight. Any ideas? So take the eight out. Does ninety eight divide by eight? No. Okay, so maybe let's try, uh, let's use our calculators and see what they have in common. So math, go over once, press 9, 8, and 98. They only have a 2 in common. So we can take out the 2. So this is a problem where it starts off with a GCF. So 8 divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 a squared. Okay, now is 4 a perfect square? That's one of the numbers on our list, okay? And then 98 divided by 2. What's 98 divided by 2? 49. 
Is 49 one of the numbers on our list? Yes, okay. So for this problem, we had to take a GCF out first, then we could do the problem like normal. Okay, so I'm gonna write this in another color so I don't forget that this can happen. So it is possible in problems to do GCF first and then to have to use a different method. So then difference of squares second. So GCF first, difference of squares second. Okay, so we've got the two. Now we're going to do difference of squares. We're going to have two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. And so if we have 4a squared, what's going to go in the first spot? 2, 2a, and 2a. And then what's going to go in the second spot? 7. I think I ran out of lead, maybe. 7 and 7. Okay. Okay, third, we have our trinomials. These are the ones that have three pieces. So, let's see. For example, a trinomial could be r squared minus 5r plus 6. And then these are the ones that everyone kind of seems to remember. So here we're choosing two numbers that multiply to 6, but add to negative 5. Two numbers that multiply to 6, but add to negative 5. 3 and 2. Would it be a regular 3 and 2? They both have to be negative. Negative 3, negative 2. So, uh-huh, exactly right. So r minus 3, r minus 2, and then we would be done. Okay? What about if I had p squared plus 13p plus 30? So multiply to 30, add to 13. 3 and 10, okay. So then our factors would be p plus 3, p plus 10. Okay. Are these problems feeling familiar? When we're factoring? I feel like you've done it before? Okay, what if we had... Um, 3n squared plus 45n plus 162. 3n squared plus 45n plus 162. Mm -hmm. 
before we do that, we got to check for one thing first. We got to see if the 3 is a GCF. So before we decide it's a slide divide problem, we have to see if it's a GCF. So does 45 divide by 3? Yes. Does 162 divide by 3? Yes. Okay. So this is not a GCF, or it's not a slide divide problem. It is a GCF problem. Okay. So let's take out the 3. So that leaves us with n squared. Uh, what's 45 divided by 3? 15. Okay. 15 n. Uh, what's 162 divided by 3? 54. Okay. All right, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 54 and add to 15. Multiply to 54 and add to 15. And let's say that multiplication is not really your thing. Do you guys remember the trick on the calculator? Anybody remember? We hit the Y equals button. We got to plug something in. We do 54 divided by x. That's what we type into the calculator is 54 divided by x. And then if we hit second graph and we look at the table, the table has all of our options. So 1 and 54, that adds to 55. That's not right. 2 and 27, that adds to 29. That's not right. 3 and 18, that adds to 21. That's not right. Decimal, decimal, I'm going to skip those. 6 and 9. That adds to 15. That's the right option. So 6 and 9. So we have 3, n plus 6, n plus 9. Okay. So we're going to say GCF first and then what do you guys call this when you do it anybody have something they call it the X thingy anybody X thingy So in any problem we do, it's possible to have a GCF. So we should always check for that. All right, four is slide, divide, bottoms up, slide, divide, bottoms up. So last time the 3 was a GCF, how can you tell that this problem is different? So there was, there was three numbers before. Mm-hmm. What's different between this problem and this problem? Yeah, it's not a GCF this time. So before, 3 could be divided out of the numbers, but this time the 5 in the front. 5 does not divide out of 7. 5 does not divide out of 2. So the number in the front cannot go away. It's got to stay there. So anytime you have a number in the front and it does not divide out, it means that you are doing a different problem than just the plain X thingy. It means you have to do a sled divide problem. So we're going to take the 5, slide it over to the 2. What is 5 times 2? Two? 
10. So we are multiplying to 10 and adding to negative 7. What are numbers that would multiply to 10 and add to negative 7? Negative 2, negative 5. Okay, so we start off by putting P minus 2 and P minus 5 in the parentheses, but we are not done. If we leave it like that, we get it wrong. We're not done. So if we slid the 5, what else should we do with the 5? We should divide by the 5. Okay. And this fraction does not reduce. So what do we do with this fraction? Bottoms up. So that becomes 5p minus 2. Now this fraction over here, this one reduces. What does it become? Negative 1. So p minus 1. All right. How are your brains feeling? Okay, let's try another one. So 7a squared plus 73, 73a plus 30. I'm probably going to need a calculator on this one. I don't know about you guys. So does this one have a GCF? Those numbers are kind of big. 7a squared plus 73a plus 30. GCF, anyone? So we can always double check with the calculator. So we can do math, 973, 30, 30. Yep, all they have in common is a one, which is the same as like not having anything in common, right? Okay, so this is a slide divide problem. The seven is not a GCF. So we have to do seven times 30. What is 7 times 30? What is it? 120. Wait, is it 120? 210. So 21 with a 0 on the end. Okay, 210. So we're multiplying to 210, adding to 73. And I do not know my factors of 210. So I'm going to press the Y equals button. And I'm going to plug it in here. I'm going to do 210 divided by X. I'm going to look at the table. Huh? What? Why would I put this as a grade? Why would I put this as a grade? <laughs> I've never done classwork notes as a grade. Uh-huh. All right, so we're looking for numbers that add to 73. So we've got a 1 and 210. Does that add to 73? Nope. We got a 2 and a 105. Does that add to 73? Nope. We got a 3 and a 70. Does that add to 73? Yes. Okay. So 3 and 70. So our parentheses so far, we got A plus 3. A plus 70. So we've done the slide. 7 sliding over. So now what do we need to do? Divide by 7. Does 3 over 7 reduce no so what do we do with the 3 over 7 
Okay, so we're going to bottoms up this one. So 7a plus 3. And then over here, does 70 over 7 reduce? Yeah, gets 10. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hand out the factoring review that I have, and we're going to start doing problems on that. Um, if you feel really comfortable with factoring and you want to ignore us and just start working ahead, you can totally do that. This seemed to be the hardest part of the test for everybody, so that's why we're looking at this part. And then if we need more help tomorrow when we go over the test to make corrections and we can do that. Which problem do you guys want to do first? Which problem do you guys want to do first? Nine? So number nine has two terms. So of our notes, which, are, which type of problems have two terms? Number nine has two terms. For our notes, which types of problems have two terms? GCF and difference of squares. So if we look at number nine, what is it? Is it GCF or is it difference of squares? Is there a minus? It can't be difference of squares if there's a plus. So this is definitely a GCF problem. So I'm going to go in my calculator. I'm going to press math. Go over to number and press 9, and let's type in 99 and 63, and then see what these have in common. So I want everyone to do that. What number do these have in common? Ninety-nine and sixty-three. What are you guys getting for the GCF for the number? Nine. Okay. And then we have an m to the fifth and an m to the third. m to the fifth and m to the third. So what are we taking out? Three, m to the third. So 99 divided by 9 is 11. We had five, we took out three. How many do we have? Two. two. Okay, 63 divided by nine, seven. We had three, we took out three, so we don't need any more M's. So we're done. Okay, let's find another problem. Did somebody say six? Yeah, okay, let's try six. So is this a GCF problem or does the seven get to stay in the front? Is it GCF or is the seven gonna stay in the front? The 7 is going to stay in the front. So if the 7 is staying, then what type of problem does that make it? If the 7 stays, then what type of problem does that make it? So 
slide divide. So we're going to take the 7, slide it over to the negative 18. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 126 and add to negative 15. So these add to negative 125, these add to negative 61, these add to negative 39, skip the decimal, skip the decimal. What does 6 and negative 21 add to? Negative 15. So our numbers are 6 and negative 21. So m plus 6, m minus 21. And do we stop there, or is there something that we should do to keep going? Divide by 7. Okay. And then what do we do? Okay, bottoms up, 7m plus 6, and then what about the other one? Simplify, m minus 3. Any other problems you guys want to try? All right, Braden and Jamani, I need your headphones. Jamani, earbuds. Braden, earbuds. I can see your earbuds. You should not be wearing them. Bring them up. Bring them up. Bring them up. Braden. Yes, both of you. I said both of your names. 